All right, this is in the matter of Greg Rose versus Auto Owners Insurance Company, TJ, TJ Decker and Associates, Inc., and Timothy John Decker, file number 20-6469-CK. Um, I have two attorneys here. I have Christine Horn, P81895, appearing on behalf of Defendant Auto Owners, and I have Joseph Milanowski, P47335, appearing on behalf of plaintiff as co-counsel, but Mr. Hamawi is not here today. Is that correct? That's correct. He won't be here. All right. And this is um, Ms. Horn. Actually, you're... Um, no. You're see, actually spying my plaintiff, motion. Plaintiff's motion to compel. There's another motion in the file, so I just saw it. So this is uh, the date and time scheduled for plaintiff's motion to compel. Correct, Your Honor. Um, so this is uh, the motion to compel is against uh, one of the defendants, auto owners. Um, and just for, for context, I think it's important to, to emphasize and recognize, uh, as you noted in introducing this case, that there is a, a, another set of defendants. Um, auto owners insurance is the insurer of the of the uh, pole barn and contents that are the subject of this case. And the Decker defendants are the insurance agent um, that put the insurance in place and maintained it over the years. Uh, and there are separate uh, claims against both of those. The, the claim against the insurance company is a breach of co contract regarding the insurance policy for denying the claim. And the claim against the agent is for essentially agent malpractice um, in terms of uh, the the the, uh, the kind of insurance put in place and the limits <clears throat> that uh, uh, were put in place as well and some of their liability flows somewhat from what happens uh, with respect to the insurance company and their their denial. Um, what we had done here is we had well let me let me back up. Um, auto owners also in addition to insuring the the barn and the contents uh, separately also insured some vehicles uh, that uh, Mr. Rose owned, some of which were in the barn and destroyed in the fire. So there was a separate insurance, auto insurance claim in this matter uh, that uh, auto owners uh, went ahead and paid uh, for the damage to those cars. And so there's a auto insurance uh, claim file and obviously related uh, auto insurance policy and information uh, regarding that. Uh, because there was an issue here, uh, uh, the main one of the main issues that auto insurance is raising in denying the claim is they're saying that uh, Mr. Rose uh, was conducting some activities uh, on the premises and with some of the personal property that they characterize as business related, that it was part of a trade profession or occupation, as I was defined in the policy. Uh, and, and so, uh, and so that's that's one of, that's one of the main issues they have going on here. Now, um, what's in, one of the things that's important is whether they are claiming that uh, uh, his activities um, were uh, happening uh, before, uh, during, or after the insurance policy was put in place. So during the course of discovery here, um, we found it uh, that it might be important to try and track down both the insurance policy, the underwriting file, and the claim file as to the auto claim. So we made a uh, first request for production of documents that asked from auto, auto owners the copy of the policy, a copy of the underwriting uh, and claims files and, uh, with respect to the auto claim. Uh, as a separate matter, um, we also uh, served a second request for production of documents where we were asking for a, uh, a complete copy of the underwriting files with related relation to the homeowner's insurance policy and, and the original policy that was put in place in 2013 before this uh, 2018 loss uh, and the various uh, uh, renewal policies and applications. Uh, uh, the reason for that is there, uh, the, the policy language with respect to how business uh, activities are defined uh, could have changed over the years, and that may impact the, uh, the arguments and the law uh, uh, with respect to how that, uh, that, how that term is, 
business term is, is defined. It may affect both how it applies to the insurance company and may, may affect uh, the claims against the insurance, insurance agent about whether and to what extent they should have put in uh, the insurance coverage or change insurance coverage uh, with respect to how uh, his, uh, his, biz, his personal property uh, that at one time had been used for a business, but uh, his testimony was that after he got the insurance was not being used for business. Um, so that's the, the potential relevancy that we were requesting uh, that information. Um, uh, we certainly think that it's, it's uh, you know, that information, I mean, as, as, as the court knows, the, uh, the information we're going after doesn't necessarily have to be admissible on its face right now. If it's information that could lead to uh, admissible ev evidence, it's, it's relevant. I certainly think that uh, information as to uh, the auto insurance policy and claim uh, is relevant and also the uh, information as to prior versions of the insurance policy uh, is, uh, is relevant. Uh, one way, which, which is also, it's also relevant, and I, you know, I, I, in the auto owner's response, they kind of bring this, bring this to the fore. Their exhibit C is a copy of their uh, recently filed motion for summary uh, disposition. And in Wait, that- Hold on one second. Did you say they filed a response? Yes, no, you no, did. In their, in their, in their exhibit, yeah, in their response to this motion, exhibit okay, C- Okay, well, hold on, hold on, Mr. Malinowski. I have not received a copy of any response to the motion to compel. From so, auto owners, you're saying? Well, I have your motion and that's it. I've never oh. seen, um, let me look. Okay. Well, maybe Ms. Horn can address that, I guess. Hold on, know. just hold on a minute. I, I just so you know, I've got to stop talking for one minute. Okay. Please. okay. All right. Um, So I've got plaintiff's motion to compel defendant auto owners responses. Um, and then I have defendant's motion to compel. All right. So you're not talking about defendant auto owners motion to compel return of privilege documents as the response. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about, yeah, that's okay, a different I have not there. received her response. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at my copy of their response. It looks like it was sent out on July 16th. So um, it says by email. So anyhow, maybe Ms. Horn can address that. At okay. Um, and I, I don't have time to review it today yeah. um, due to my docket. So, Ms. Horn, was that emailed to us? It was sent to the court um, on July 16th via first class mail and emailed to all parties the same day. Okay, so you sent that on July 16th and you're in Troy. So, I'm going to guess that I have not received it yet. Okay. All right. So, and um, I'm really, um, I would like to review that response. Ms. Adams, do you have like 15 minutes or a half hour, we could stick this somewhere else. How far out? Um, probably just a week. I mean, as soon as possible, because I could probably get my hands on her response. Um, Uh, 9.30, July 27th. You guys available via Zoom? 9.30, July 27th? Let me look here. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, that works for me. That's um, Tuesday, right? Yes, that would work for me as well. All right. So we will adjourn this to July 27th, you said, Miss Adams, at 9.30? Correct. Okay.
Um, do one of you want to do, or um, we'll just, I'll do a, a, I'll do a scheduling order and put that date in there. All right. Okay. All right. That sounds All right. good. All right. We'll Thank see, you. We'll see you back via Zoom that day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Miss Adams, could you just generate a notice? Please. Yes, I can. Thank you. All right, Mr. Raines. Hi, Mr. Good Raines. morning, Your Honor. Is your client with you? Uh, she is. She's present in my office. Okay, so this is in the matter of Brianna Gutierrez versus Aaron Kingsley. File number 12-37566-DP. We have attorney Lowry Raines, P55246, appearing on behalf of plaintiff mother. Um, I have not received, I don't know who that attorney is, somebody waiting, everybody's not on this. All right, um, I have not received either a response or an appearance by anyone um, to your verified motion. I don't know who my dad did. Who is it? Um, evidently, he's here at the courthouse. Um, I need that. I need somebody to come up in the courtroom. All right, Mr. Raines. Evidently, Mr. Kingsley is here at the courthouse, and I have to find someone because I wasn't notified. I don't have a bailiff, so. Um, we're going to have to find someone to come in and stand in as a bailiff for a moment. Okay, so give me just a second. All right. Judge, do you want me to come in there or just zoom? If he's on the podium, I should be able to hear him. No, Sue, that's fine.
Mr. Rains, we're, we're trying to find somebody to come in. Um, I didn't know. Um, usually we get notice if people are coming in and I have a bailiff here, but I didn't have notice. Yeah, I see that your, your, your notice to appear that the court generated did indicate it was to be via Zoom. So I, I would have anticipated that uh, Mr. Kingsley would have participated by that manner, but I understand. Right, and it's just, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. We're trying to find somebody. You have something else somewhere at? Uh, no, I, I believe I'm back before you in, in about, oh, seven or eight minutes um, on, a, on another hearing. But uh, we do, we have this one. And, and Judge, my, my bandwidth, uh, it appears to be low once again. So I, I may, if you want me to, um, to go off of, you know, to stop my video, I'm, I'm happy to do that if we're, if we're having that problem. 